Thank you so much for joining us today for Women in Business with Marketa Shevalova, Deputy Director, Czech Trade Chicago. At this time, I would like you to remind you to mute your microphones. Uh, please note this event is being recorded. At the end of the session, we will open the floor for discussion. Please place any questions that you might have in the chat. I will place my email as well in the chat if you should have any questions when we go offline. Now, I would love to give the floor to my colleague, Public Relations Specialist, Andrea Pohl. Thank you, Mary. And welcome, welcome to today's Women in Business. Through the Women in Business series, the Embassy of the Czech Republic celebrates Czech women doing business in America. It focuses on a variety of businesses from small companies, to large factories, and a variety of sectors. The Women in Business series is a part of the Czech Embassy's Rich Ones Provisions Festival 23, Eliška Yukova. Eliška Yukova, for those who don't know, was born in today's Czech Republic and was famously known as the queen of the steering wheel. Although she only raced for five years in the 1920s, she went up against the world's top male drivers and became the first woman to ever Grand Prix. Yet Yukova was also a great businesswoman who combined business with her love of travel. After she retired from racing, after her husband tragically died in a car race, Leshka Yunkova ventured abroad in a brand new car to seek out potential business opportunities as an ambassador on behalf of the vehicle manufacturer Bugatti. And she was very good at finding new business partners. And therefore, her entrepreneurial spirit inspired our Women in Business series today. And this leads me to welcome a woman who resembles Eliška Yunkova, an envoy in her own right, Marketa Shebelova, Deputy Director of Czech Trade Chicago. Marketa Shebelova is a very knowledgeable and experienced entrepreneur who started her own businesses and imported products to the Czech Republic before joining Czech Trade. Just to inform everybody, Czech Trade is a business and trade promotion agency of the government of the Czech Republic. Its main objective is to further develop international trade and cooperation between the Czech Republic and foreign business entities. It is located in more than 54 foreign offices around the globe. And Marketa Shebolova deputy directs the office in Chicago. She will speak about Czech, um, Czech trade and how it promotes business and trade between the Czech Republic and the United States. And she will offer her perspective on doing business on both markets. With these words, I would like to welcome Marketa. Uh, hello, Andrea. Hello, everybody who joined us today. Thank you for the introduction. Thank you very much for being here. We really appreciate it. And may I start off the conversation by you telling us a little bit about yourself and your background, please? Uh, of course. Uh, so um, my name is Marketa. As you mentioned, uh, I serve as the deputy director of the Czech Trade Office here in the United States. Uh, our office is located in Chicago. So I moved here over two years ago in July 2021. Uh, I've been working with Czech Trade since January 2019. Prior to my posting, I worked at the headquarters as an export specialist, and I was assisting primarily companies in retail and design. Uh, I'm a graduate of Prague University of Economics and Business. I studied international relations and diplomacy, so I'm in, right in my alley. And uh, as you mentioned in the past, I've had also experience working in our uh, family business, which engaged with import, a wholesale and distribution of alcoholic beverages. So I managed to gain some knowledge in how food and beverage retail works in the Czech Republic. And I also started a business of my own uh, when I studied college. It was a fashion brand. We started as a small uh, local ready to wear business and um, then it enrolled into making uh, tailor-made wedding dresses. So that was quite an experience and um, it helps me nowadays to understand a little bit more the needs of the entrepreneurs um, and you know, know the struggles of the business as well. Wow, you bring a lot of experience to the job. Um, 
that's that's wonderful. Uh, what what is check trade? Can you tell me now in your own words? I know I um, I described it a little bit, but if you could please describe yeah. it in a little bit further detail. Yeah, yeah. So uh, it's as you mentioned, uh, trade and promotion uh, agency. Uh, it's a government entity. It was established by the Ministry of Industry and Trade. Uh, and for over 25 years, uh, we have been helping Czech small and medium companies to go global and succeed in foreign markets. Uh, we have uh, over 60 uh, locations, so 50 offices and 60 locations uh, on, the on the five continents, and we offer complex services across industries. Mm -hmm. um which is wonderful <laughs> that you're bringing um, Czech businesses here to the United States. But also you, don't you also help American businesses go to the Czech Republic and find uh, partners there as well? Absolutely. Uh, so uh, for American companies, uh, we are a natural partner that can identify potential suppliers in the Czech Republic. We can uh, provide matchmaking for them. We can make the introductions. So if any American company is interested in finding a business partner in the Czech Republic, we can absolutely assist them and we can facilitate and organize so-called uh, sourcing days. It's, it's a type of service we offer for foreign companies. And uh, sourcing days consist in bringing the US buyers to uh, the Czech Republic, setting up meetings or series of meetings with the Czech companies, showing them around, showing them the factories, the business environment, uh, and, and so on. Uh, all of these services uh, we provide to foreign companies, uh, like in the US, the US companies are free of charge. Um, that is a wonderful service because I know it must be so hard to enter a market as a company, um, you know, and also for Czech companies to coming here. Uh, I mean, this is a humongous market um, because, you know, the Czech Republic is the size of South Carolina. Um, and then they, you know, when they come here, you know, where do you start, right? Which state, um, you know, you know, and, and I guess, it, of, of course, it depends on the sector. Um, so I don't know if you want to delve into that a little bit and tell us which sectors do you work with, um, you know, for the Czech companies coming over here and how do you find the right location even for them in the United States? Uh, yeah, exactly. As you mentioned, um, Czech Republic uh, is a small country and um, one of the, our roles as Czech trade is to promote um, Czech companies and Czech business in general. So let's be 100% transparent. Not everybody in the United States uh, know, um, knows about uh, the Czech Republic and to what we can offer. So a huge part of my job, uh, our job with my colleagues is to raise awareness uh, amongst the US partners and um, you know, tell them a little bit more about different sectors of the Czech economy where we strong, not only the traditional ones, such as manufacturing, beer, glass, porcelain, but also the modern solution we can bring to the table in IT, ICT, uh, gaming, advanced manufacturing. So um, here in Chicago, I try to attend many networking events, uh, our trade shows all over the country, uh, uh, or give interviews such as this one uh, to promote Czech companies and the activities of our agency. Also, I can expand a little bit because I already mentioned what we do for the US companies. I can expand a little bit more about what we can do for Czech companies to match them um, with potential companies, potential um, partners here on the uh, on American market. Uh, basically, uh, it really depends on the readiness of the Czech company, how ready they are to enter the U.S. market. So uh, we have uh, companies that are not sure if the U.S. is for them. 
So for such companies that are like level zero of readiness, we can offer different seminars, workshops held in the Czech Republic where they can learn a little bit more about the challenges and the opportunities on the American market. Then, uh, then we have um, clients that are already uh, knowledgeable in international trade. They do have some experience, but only, for example, in Europe or Asia, different locations, not the U.S. And um, these companies usually uh, seek information about all the requirements for their products certificates, uh, legal requirements, or on state and federal level, uh, they want to know what they, their products need to be able to be sold on the American market. For example, when you're a manufacturer of toys and you want to bring wooden toys to the United States, there are certain regulations, of course, because it's products for kids, for children. So they need to know what, what's, what's children, what are children in a legal system in, in the United States. It, it means any product for people under 12 years old and so on. So these are all the information that we can gather and present to the company. Uh, then uh, the, the other level, when, the, when our clients are ready to enter the American market, they have everything. Uh, they have the products ready, we can help them with the business development. So basically, we are um, part of their team, so to say, and we are searching for potential business partners. We are reaching out to them via cold calling, mailing, and we're finding out if they're interested in cooperation. So the majority of the time what we specialize uh, on is providing made to measure services for the companies depending on their level of readiness. But what we can also do is to organize a trade show presence or missions for the Czech companies. And uh, last not, but not least, here in Chicago, we have quite a new service for those companies that want to be here in the United States. Uh, they have to have like a, a, an office and a presence here. Uh, so we offer a business incubator, which is a service where we provide uh, an office for a company for six months and our services to really support them in their endeavor to find potential business partners or to open a new branch um, and so on. Wow. Well, first of all, you have a very uh, difficult and complex workload, I have to say, from, you know, from the businesses that are not so ready to all the legal um, documents and everything and uh, regulations you have to get together for everybody. Um, and, you know, also obviously to find the right location and partners. Um, that is a very difficult job um, that you have, I have to say. Um, but I do love the idea of a business incubator in Chicago. Um, may I ask you, um, since Czech Trade has an office there, you know, since the Czech Republic has chosen um, Chicago um, as a location for Czech Trade, and now you're doing an incubator there, why is Chicago so important, you know, to the Czech, Czech Republic? Why is that city? Is it because of its history, or why, you know, what are the what is the connection? Yeah, well, of course, uh, there has always been a large Czech American population. I think this is this is known even back in the Czech Republic. Uh, but that that didn't really play the role for us to establish the office here. Uh, we have the office in Chicago for over 15 years. And I believe that the location was chosen based on the similarities between the Czech industry and the industry here in the in the Midwest. Mm -hmm. uh, also, Chicago is very strate strategically located. It has two airports. It's a business hub. And uh, just one, one thing I want to say, even though we are located, our primary office is located here in Chicago, it's not the only one we have in the United States. And we don't serve just uh, the Midwest. 
but the whole country. So even though you're uh, we're, uh, looking for business partners uh, in um, state of Washington, we can you can also reach out to us and we, we will do it. We'll do it for you if, if, if you if, if you are the Czech company. So. Are there other Czech trade um, offices located in the United States? Yes, uh, uh, this year, uh, spring 2023, yeah, we opened uh, a new office in Austin, Texas. Uh, the why is we see a lot of opportunities in Texas itself uh, with its uh, exciting ecosystem for tech companies, especially. And then we also have shared offices with our sister agency, Czech Invest. Uh, one is in New York, uh, at the East Coast, and for West Coast is San Francisco. So colleagues uh, in New York and San Francisco primarily uh, work for Czech Invest, but they're providing also some Czech trade services. Um, the why is, uh, you know, here in Chicago, I already mentioned to you, we're just a small team. It's uh, two of us. Um, in the other cities, it's, it's a one man, one woman show. And the demand from the companies um, is it, very high. And Czech companies are more and more interested in the uh, US market. So that's why we decided to open a, a full um, office in, in Texas. Yeah, I am surprised um, that it's only two of you actually. <laughs> Um, with local help, um, I know you yeah, told exactly. us privately, uh, with local help in the Chicago office because uh, the demand and the workload is so huge. Um, about how many, um, you know, Czech companies do you work with at a time? Um, yeah, well, uh, it depends. Usually we have um, three and three to four projects we're working on. Uh, at, at one time, uh, it's uh, e in a year, it's on average like 15 clients. But you know, you have a lot of uh, longer projects that you have to work on. And then there, then they, there you, you have um, also some inquiries or some emails that you get every day when people are asking you little things and you have to, um, attend to that as well but usually it's like 15 uh, 15 companies a year where we do like ready to mm -hmm. of course of course yeah of course we need to take on more uh which can i ask you about which sectors um you know which um the companies that are coming from the czech republic which sectors are they really looking at um you know to succeed on in the american market so uh we uh help really companies uh, across industries. Uh, here in Chicago, uh, we um, specialize more on advanced manufacturing, construction, consumer goods. Uh, in Austin, it's more um, about aerospace, uh, IT companies, software companies. Um, but honestly, it's really across, across industries. Lately, we've been seeing that many Czech companies have been interested in selling their goods on Amazon. So we are also helping, uh, you know, helping them to to navigate, uh, navigate uh, how to do that and so on. Of course, a lot of um, the um, the inquiries from the companies, uh, a lot of them really ex uh, exceed our expertise. So we also have uh, a network of other companies, you know, such as lawyers, uh, uh, accountants, or uh, other companies that can help with business developments that we can re recommend. Not of course, only. I mean, especially with the legal, I have to say. Uh, Absolutely, yeah. Yes. Absolutely, we we cannot we we're not lawyers and we cannot provide any information. And I I I, I can't stress this enough. Like, if you want to expand. Uh, if you want to really do something on the American market, like hire the lawyer. I know it's going to be, it's mm -hmm. going to be uh, expensive. Lawyers in this country are much more expensive than in the Czech Republic, but really work with an American lawyer when you want to enter uh, the U.S. 
So for a company that, you know, would be interested, uh, a Czech company, let's cover the Czech companies first, yeah. um, Czech company coming onto the American market, how do they go about contacting you or, you know, what what is the process, um, I guess the intake process, I can call it, at a Czech trade? Mm -hmm. So, um, as I mentioned, we uh, we are providing a lot of seminars and workshops uh, in the Czech Republic. So sometimes when the companies don't know about us, we're also traveling to the regions. So they find about us and they can reach directly to me on my email or via LinkedIn, or they can uh, reach to Czech Trade uh, via the headquarters where we have like um, industry specialists. Uh, and then, well, uh, usually here in the U.S., we have like online um, online call. Um, I find out what they need, and I'm trying to find the right uh, service for them to meet their their expectations. Um, yeah, so that's it. Could you tell me about any success stories? Yeah, of course. Um, there are there are some uh, really there there are companies, uh, and you've already uh, interviewed some of the women uh, women that are that are that, that have been successful. Um, uh, we have a well known cosmetic brand um, number one on Czech and Slovakian market. Um, they are exporting worldwide. They are, they've been very successful lately on American Amazon. So they're selling um, cosmetic products. Uh, what is it called? Uh, what is it called? Uh, Dermaco. Der Dermaco. Okay. Yeah. I'll look that up myself. <laughs> yeah. Well, you should. I'm, I'm wearing their uh, lipstick. So it's 16 hours lipstick. Um, so yeah, it, it really works. Uh, Dan, um, there, there is uh, there is a company that's making uh, granola bars, cereal bars. Uh, also been very successful they have a company established here in the united states they have a warehouse and they are um uh, they are making private labels for uh, different retail chains here in the united states so mm -hmm. those are two of uh, the success stories how long did it take them to you know how what is like the timeline from when they contact you to to you know, to be able to be called a success story usually? Does it take, you know, a year, two years, three years down the line? How long does it um, take? It really depends on the sector, but I would say on average, uh, you have to have um, patience, you have to have a, a budget, and you have to budget for at least two years. So I think two years before something starts happening, it's more or less the realistic expectations what you can you can get you know like for example uh, we uh, I mentioned that we are also helping Czech companies to um, come to the U.S. and present their products on trade shows and sometimes Czech companies come and they come to one trade show and they're like well nothing happened we don't have any success so we 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 will not come next year well you know you have to really give it some time. You have to come repeatedly and show show yourself here so the potential business partners here in the U.S. really know that you have the budget for it and that you, you mean it and you want to be serious about the U.S. market. Yeah, I believe when we interviewed Alba Form uh, uh -huh. in our first uh, in our interview, um, we learned that, yes, you have to be prepared to invest into your business idea here on the American market. It is a large market. Um, it takes a while to get noticed. And I believe that was the advice as well. Absolutely. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Um, in um, Since we are talking about women, um, could you please uh, tell me um, any advice that you would have for women, you know, from all the experiences? I mean, you you have started your own businesses. Um, you've been there, you know, in those shoes. Um, now you're advising women doing business on the market. Um, could you please, uh, do you have anything to share in that regard? Uh, yes, I think... Um... Living here in the U.S., it's been very inspiration to me in the way that I, I, I really think that 
not only women, everybody, you can achieve really anything if you want to, if you're really hardworking person. Uh, for women, especially, I would say, don't be shy. Know that your opinion matters and that you're enough and don't, don't get intimidated. And I would also say, you know, support other women and young people and share your experience with them and uplift them. I've, uh, I had really good experience with, um, I already mentioned to you, uh, we, ha uh, we have a partnership with uh, my university and uh, we have the inter internship program. So I, I have every year uh, young people coming to my office. I'm working with them. I'm, I'm, I'm in touch with young people. I've also uh, joined uh, the alumni mentoring of my university where I share my experience with, yeah, with women, actually. My mentees, both my mentees, uh, last, last one and this year, they're both women. So I really encourage every woman to share what she's learned and you know just be aware that we uh, all have this like imposter syndrome and sometimes we think well I'm not enough why would someone invite me to get, give a talk and give an interview but yeah you matter and just go for it and support other women completely agree with you <laughs> And um, as far as uh, cultural um, differences, um, this is for women and men entering, you know, the American market, but also for American companies coming to the Czech Republic. Are there any uh, business differences that you could point out, you know, for everybody to be aware of? Well, thank you. That's a, that's a wonderful question. And thanks for that. Um yeah, absolutely. There are cultural differences between uh, Americans and Europeans. Um, you know, like I've um, I've observed that when like an American partner tells you that something is interesting, it's it doesn't always have a positive connotation. So, like when Czech company hears the reaction, "Wow, this is interesting," they th they think, "Wow, yeah, they they are really interested because it's interesting." Well. No, not so much. Uh, also, I always tell my Czech clients that the humor, the sense of humor is different. And I really, even though I love Czech humor, I really advise my clients against using it in front of the American partners because it can come across as offensive. So, yeah. Uh, absolutely. And uh, what I also have seen uh, that Czech entrepreneurs and Czech companies are always very uh, knowledgeable in like the technical solutions of their products, but it sometimes doesn't meet the expectations of what American partners think they will learn about the product. So uh, you know, like when you're presenting your ideas, I think Americans are very good uh, with presenting. They have a really good skill set for that. Uh, and they want to hear the Czech partners presented the American way with enthusiasm and more like a sales pitch. Uh, and sometimes the Czech companies really focus more on the technical part than, you know, selling and be a little bit more out there. So um, that's, that's about business, you know, like cultural differences. Uh, also, I think that we kind of underestimate in general the differences because when you travel to Asia to do business, you kind of know, okay, it's going to be different. But then when you have American partners, you're like, look, it's a Western culture. It's going to be the same. Well, not really. So, yeah. And talking about uh, some business differences, uh, yeah, well, there are some obvious ones related, for example, to the demography of the United States. I mentioned uh, the successful company, Vermaco. Uh, so, um, you know, when you're a European company and you're on the uh, European market uh, and you want to expand to uh, the US, you have to think about it. You have to think about the demography. You have to know your products and who you're going to serve. So, for example, when you have a cosmetic brand and you're selling foundations, you, of course, 
expanding to the United States. Before even entering the market, you must be sure that your product include everybody in the society, right? Because you want to position yourself on the market and serve everybody. And sometimes, you know, when you're serving other um, um, uh, other destinations in export, you kind of forget about that. But you know, those are just some obvious obvious things. No, I think you're absolutely correct. Um, you know, especially you. Um, touched upon the point when I'm, I'm Czech companies come here, they have such deep knowledge, you know, um, and technical knowledge of their products, um, but they also have to sell it because Americans, you know, um, we, we just have a little bit different personalities and we are ready for that pitch. So <laughs> we, we need to get it um, when the Czech companies come. But um, taking that, um, you know, and, and focusing with the American companies when they go to the Czech Republic, um, you know, to find partners there, I do have to say that uh, that is a strength coming from the Czech Republic is that, you know, our people in the Czech Republic are very educated um, and, you know, um, and we have, like you said, technical, very uh, good technical universities and uh, education there. And I, so I think it is, very good also with Czech invest you know coming in it's good to um, invest in the Czech Republic and do trade with uh, find good partners and do um, good trade with you know companies in the Czech Republic going that way yeah no no totally I, I absolutely agree like the level of knowledge and education is is extremely high in in the Czech Republic that's for sure I just yeah. wanted to jump in as well. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a question from uh, the public and from Sharka specifically. She said, thank you for organizing this meeting and important discussion. Can you provide more information about what type of support you provide to women-led and or women-owned companies, both Czech or American, to enter the respective market? And a second part of the question is, does it vary from the men-led, men-owned companies? Uh, uh, at Czech Trade, we don't have a, like specified, um, we don't have like targeted missions or specified services just for women-led companies. Uh, but uh, we were talking about it, maybe thinking and something, this is something for future to consider that maybe we should organize only a mission for Czech companies coming to, to the U.S. Uh, I've like my colleague here at the Consulate General in Chicago, she organized uh, some talk also with um, with like important entrepreneurs, women. Uh, it was with collaboration with Fulbright. So uh, we do something like that, but we don't have a specific services per se. I also wanted to ask, do you also have a network of businesses that you connect people to. I know that you're connecting them to, uh, you know, find a business and you have your sourcing days, but are, are you also keeping a database of like where businesses can reach out to each other or having networking business sessions? Uh, well, uh, you mean check businesses where they can uh, reach out to each other? Exactly. Uh, sometimes it, it uh, happens naturally, organically at trade missions or uh, at um, seminars or trade shows. But because of the GDPR in Europe, we cannot like share contacts. Um, you know, like it's not like we can share um, more or less this, this that database. But I think Czech companies are very, very good. If they want to, they're very good at sharing experiences. Uh, like recently we had um, we had a talk about how to enter American market I can check uh, we had a lawyer from here from Chicago um, giving some advices and we had one successful company that made it here in the United States they were sharing their uh, their success stories with uh, with the other audience as well so that's wonderful. I was also I was also curious. Um, you mentioned some of the challenges. One being, you know, the humor is different. Um, one of the big things I think on the U.S. market is the size of the country itself. Um, uh, how how have you seen Czech companies just deal with that in general? I mean, it's like Andrea pointed out, uh, the Czech Republic is the size of South Carolina. So supply and how do they deal with that? 
do you have any, um, can you offer any comments on that? Yeah, exactly. Like, like that's the thing. Sometimes a uh, chip company comes to us and they're like, we want to go to the United States and we, we want to make a deal with uh, a big retail store. And I'm, I'm like retail chain. And I'm uh, like, let's put this into perspective. Do you even have, can you produ produce enough to really supply all of that? Because this country is very big. So this is also our role to more or less manage expectations and tell companies, look, maybe let's start smaller. Let's start uh, at the East Coast and let's try there. Let's uh, let's try to find distributors, uh, small smaller partners, and then we can we can um, you know get first references and then make it a little bit bigger and bigger and bigger and grow as we go. Thank you so much for, for offering your perspective on that. And also you deal with a lot of, of, of small companies as well in the United States, right? So if they wanted to get in touch with you, um, and we had a question, just uh, what would be the best way of contacting you? Yeah, absolutely. Like uh, they can connect with me on LinkedIn or they can reach me out on my work email, which is like my first name dot last name at checktrade.cz. So uh, please uh, feel free to share the contact with me, with, with everybody. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to, to connect and um, see what, how we can help. I'd like to um, do one follow-up question about the business incubator. Could you just yeah. tell us a little bit more about it? Because, I mean, that's absolutely fascinating. And I just would like to know what happens in the business incubator. Yeah. So, Dave, as I mentioned, uh, this service uh, is targeting uh, companies that already have some business partners here in the United States. And they really feel like they cannot be handling what they're doing uh, across the ocean and they want to have someone uh, present here on the American soil. So they either can send someone from the Czech uh, branch or they can uh, hire a, a local sales representative per se and they can use uh, the offices we provide here in the center of Chicago for um, three to six months. I always recommend uh, six months. And uh, what we provide is not only the, the office space itself, but also uh, 70 hours of our uh, of uh, our services. So whatever the company needs here in Chicago, uh, in the US, we can provide. Typically, uh, the companies want to uh, want us our help to identify some more potential business partners so we can look look that up for them, um, connect them with uh, lawyers, accounting firms, and so on. So uh, yeah, it's it's a really great, uh, it's been a really great service. We started um, last year uh, in uh, spring, and so far we, we had five companies going through the incubator. So it's like a, you know, like start for them, it can save some money in the beginning of the expansion uh, in the US, which as you also mentioned, it's not, not cheap. So it kind of uh, helps them to a little bit. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, you can point them in the right, the right direction and, and everything. Um, do we have any other questions, Mary? I don't have any other questions right now. Um, I think if we go offline, please feel free to email us or Marquetta, um, your, uh, if it's related to business and working with them. Um, I, I wanted to overall thank you for joining us, but Marquetta, is there anything else that you would like to add for, for small businesses or, or companies just trying to uh, get ahead here on the American market? Uh, well, first of all, thank you very much uh, to, to Andrea, to you, Mary, uh, the whole team of the Czech Embassy in, in Washington uh, for having me and for organizing this. And I would like to uh, encourage uh, any U.S. company that want 
um, some help navigating the possibilities uh, that Czech industry can offer to reach out to me. And um, also to all Czech companies, uh, just know that we are here for you and we will be happy to help you to conquer the, the American market. Thank you so much. Um, thank you for sharing your experience with us today, Marketa, uh, for sharing uh, your perspective with us. We're also grateful for all of you who joined us today. Um, this concludes our Women in Business series for now, as well as the Mutual Inspirations Festival 2023. We hope that today's event inspires you in your own journey in the business realm. Thank you so much for joining us and have a great day. Thank you. Thank you.